another Eurovision video review for 2018 and I'm really seeing the light at the end of the tunnel. This is the second to last review. Um, and this is about Israel. Their song this year is called Toy, performed by Netta Barcelai. And that's a little weird in itself that there is an Israeli song because of course they announced to the world that they would not be participating anymore due to a reorganization of their broadcasting system, which means that they no longer have an EBU member. But their broadcaster was given a temporary one-year membership to tie up some loose threads, and so they're participating this year. But personally, I can't say I've heard any indications that there will be a permanent membership extended, so this really may be uh, the last time we see Israel in the contest. Uh, and if that's the case, it would be hilarious if they actually won. Uh, they are the big favorites with uh, all the betting agencies. Um, and if they were to win, strictly speaking by the rules, the invitation should then be extended to the runner-up. And I would hope that the EBU isn't PC enough uh, to allow a non-member to host if, you know, if, if they might be sad if they didn't get to host. But that's of course if they win. Uh, and this year I have no idea what's going to happen because the field is so even. There are pretty much no standouts at all this year. But if there were any, Israel would be one of them. Uh, this is definitely a song that you remember. Uh, not just because the singer clucks like a chicken, um, but it's also because it's really catchy. Uh, it has a pretty simple and straightforward message that I hope a lot of young female viewers will take a little bit to heart. Um, I don't know how it's going to be presented on stage, but I'm pretty sure it's going to be very colorful. Um, and with quite possibly a lot of elements. Um, usually I'm not a super fan of that, but I think that in this song that could probably fit. Um, I've, I don't, I don't watch the, um, the videos from the rehearsals and stuff because I want there to be some surprises for when I watch the show, but I have been hearing that they're going to redo it completely, they're not going to keep any elements from previous performances and they're gonna give us surprises in Lisbon. Uh, and I hope so. I think that this is a relatively strong entry, but I think that it's going to leave quite a significant portion of the audience metaphorically scratching their heads, um, not understanding what is up with this. Um, that will be mostly the older segments of the audience who vote less, I think. So that might not be such a problem, such a drawback, after all. <clears throat> uh, I think that with the kind of mood that people are in on Eurovision night and the kind of mood that they want to be in, people are going to find this fun and enjoyable more than anything. Because uh, it has a good beat, uh, keeps you listening, it's catchy, and like I said, I think it's going to be colorful to watch. Uh, I will be absolutely stunned if we don't see this on the Saturday. Um, I don't know if it's going to win. It's possibly a little bit too weird. I'm not sure it has the broad appeal that it'll need to go all the way. But if it wins, it'll be interesting to see how the EBU handles that, because that will be a situation that has not arisen in the contest history so far. Uh, good luck to Israel. I think that no matter what happens, they are going to go out with a bang if this is their last year in the contest. Uh, thank you, Israel, for all the wonderful entries that you've sent. They haven't all been great, but they've been interesting, and a lot of them have been songs that will be part of Eurovision history forever. Thank you.